today is chest day and before I got started I always do a shoulder warm-up if you want to know what that is you can go on to my shoulder warm exercise I think it's under the playlist exercises you'll find it there a warm-up so I do that first always always do that first it's very cold today I've got the door open as well well it's cold for me anyway but it's actually uh, it says 18 degrees it doesn't feel like 18 degrees it's very windy it seems very cold to me Anyway, when it comes to warming up, I just wanted to share this guy with you. Something that I've been doing for many years. I can't remember where I learned this, but all I do know is it works. Widest grip possible when you're doing the flat bench or inclined, depending on the movement. And you just want to do like four or five reps. Very easy. And then one arm at a time. Again, this is about putting your shoulder in a very disadvantaged position down here. You can see this arm, I think you can see it, yeah. It's all the way down here, it's like an extreme stretch. You're never ever gonna be in that extreme range when it comes to the load. So then what you do is you get the bar and you move it towards your neck. And from here, same again. Just rotate, I don't know if you can see that, but I'm just rotating my elbows under the bar. Sorry if it's bad camera work, I'm on my own in my garage gym, so just bear with it. But you can at least listen to what I'm trying to say. Just hold it here for about half a minute to a minute, that's it. It's an extreme range of motion. The idea is that... And I've said this before for those people who follow me, and for those people who don't want you, then listen up. If you are training a bench press, let's say the range of motion is here. So this is full range of motion, okay? I'll show you from the side. So this is full range of motion, where the bar touches my chest. Full range of motion. Imagine we train, in fact not imagine, let's just say this, okay. Majority of the times when you see people tear a pec, it is in that range of motion. So the weakest portion, which is when you touch your pec, that's going to be the weakest. That's where most people tear the pec. And when you see people that tear pecs, often they don't have this range over here down. What happens is they get very tight and unless they've got a weight on the bar, they can't do this last portion. That's very, very dangerous. So you'll see people do like a partial rep or they'll say, no need to touch your chest, just do where you are allowed to, that's flexibility enough. Where your flexibility is allows, that's full range of motion enough and it should be fine to just fire back. Especially on the incline, this is very common when you see people incline pressing. They don't go all the way down and they have this thing in the head where if they're going too far down then they're going to injure themselves. It's quite the opposite. So that is full range of motion when you touch your chest. Hopefully you guys can hear me because that's been covered by the mic, but it should be alright, these are quite good mics. Okay, so from here, in the warm-up, all we're trying to do is I'm trying to go for the range of motion, like this. Now, obviously, we can't do it because the bar's here. So what we do is we get this bar up, and as the bar comes up, this comes back. You see, you have that motion over there. And what that does is, that allows you to warm up in an exaggerated range of motion. I don't know if that's the correct term for it, but that's what I call it. It's an exaggerated range of motion, which you are never, ever going to use when doing heavy weights. Because if we are going past there, then obviously when the bar is flat against our chest and both hands are in line, we're never gonna break that parallel. We're never gonna break it. The only way we can break it is if we lift one up and then this anchors the other one or levers the other one to go down. So I think it's a great warm up. Not many people use it. I've never seen many people do it in the gym. You obviously cannot do this with weight. It has to be bar only. So just make sure that you do this first. If the bar's already loaded, then unload the bar, because most people tend to just leave a 20 kilo plate on the bar. I hate it, even in my own gym, I always unrack the plates on anything. So no matter what, what, what they're on, whether it's a T-bar row or this, the only thing that you will see me leave plates on, and that is the deadlift, because, well, I don't wanna, I don't have a jack to keep lifting it and putting it on. And I don't use that bar for anything else other than deadlift, so that bar is on its own. It's probably the most ex expensive bar in here, but it's for deadlifts only. Okay, so that is my quick warm-up for chest. Now, I'm going to get into it today. I'm not going to show you the whole session. I'm just going to probably show you the last three or four sets, and I'll explain exactly what I'm doing right now. In fact, I'll explain now what I'm doing in the session. Again, this is just a refresher. 
it's something new, it's a new environment, it's a new gym for me. Bench, you know, have having to move it around, so everything has to be bang on before I do train. I've got to make sure everything's 100% exactly the same as it was the week before and the week before that. So because it's a new environment, I'm just going to take it very easy. Now, I've not got many niggles and pains, but... Uh, sorry, I've got many niggles, but no pains. So I've got a bit of a niggle in my elbow at the minute. I've got a little bit of a niggle in my chest, uh, sorry, in my shoulder. So I'm going to take it a little bit easy. I think today I'll work up to around 100 kilo. Let's see how it goes. So that was set number three. And as I said earlier on, I have a little bit of a niggle in my shoulder and my elbow. So I'm taking it easy. I'm not going to go heavy today. This is only 80 kilogram. I will obviously build it up in the next couple of weeks. But right now, it's okay. It doesn't matter because there's always next week, guys. There's always tomorrow. Don't think that with intention I came to do 100. I might even do 100 in the last set. I don't know. But it doesn't matter. It's okay. I'm still getting a good workout because it's a new exercise. When I say new exercise, remember I've been doing this for probably 20 years, but it's still a new, new routine. It's a new, uh, new program. And this program, if you haven't watched the other video, it's uh, about me adding some size, adding some real muscle mass to my frame. I haven't done that in a very long time. The UK is so weird. I mean, I got the door open. I came in today to train. It was cold outside. For me, I would say it was freezing. Put a jacket on, and then all of a sudden, you just get really hot. The UK is really funny. It's a very weird country where you haven't got a clue what the weather's gonna be like. You wake up in the morning, sunshine, and before you know it, you need a Canada Goose Parker coat at the end of it. And no, I don't have one of those jackets, and I would never buy one. Rip off, waste the money, and they look shit. So, okay, I do uh, one more set. I've done three, yeah, I've done three sets. Three sets of eight. This is gonna be set number four of eight on 80 kilograms. And if I feel good, I might just bang on another 10 and do 100. Because everything kind of warms up after a bit. See, it takes time. In this game, you gotta be patient. Don't rush it, be patient. So, this is technically the last set, but we'll see. And always, don't be afraid to change your workout throughout. If it feels good, you feel good. If it doesn't, back off. Be very smart. Okay, so that felt good, felt easy. I'm just going through the motions right now. And that's all I really am doing. So there's no actual work. I'm not building muscle. This isn't burning fat. And don't think that this is doing nothing as well. This is doing a lot. There's a lot of process behind the scenes which you guys don't see. There's ligaments, there's tendons, there's motor units, there's muscle memory, every little thing. Digestion, even aids in digestion. Yes, moving your blood around the system. There's a recovery process that takes place. There's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of actions that take place which you don't even realize, you don't even know. Many people don't even think about all this stuff, but when you go to the gym and you're not bettering your best, or you're not lifting new weights, or you're not doing something harder than the week before, you think, well, am I just going to the gym? Is it a waste of time? No, it's definitely not a waste of time. If it's a waste of time, then I've been wasting my time for the past 10 years because I ain't done nothing in the gym for at least 10 years. I've just been coasting, but coasting is good. Coasting is healthy, it keeps you in check keeps you accountable and you know, keeps you on track to doing something. And then when you are like me at the stage of like, okay, now everything's in order. Now let's focus on a goal. Let's give ourselves something to work for. Let's put something out there that's challenging and let's try and achieve that goal. It gives you a very, very good starting block. Well, most guys would probably work really hard to get to the physique I'm in right now. Whereas for me, this is a new, this is a starting block for some new muscle, some new growth. And by doing everything, by doing something every single day, every single week for years on end, without growing, without getting leaner, without getting anything, my body stayed prime, my body stayed fresh. It stayed ready to go. And um, 
health is very important. There's a lot of aspects of health. Yes, take your supplements. Yes, sleep. Go for a walk. You've got to train hard. You know, you've got to train moderate. You've got to train easy. It's not just about training hard. There's a lot of work that goes into it. Then you've got to eat the right food. You've got to eat bad as well. You've got to eat the bad food to eat the good food. It's all a circle. Everything collectively works together. Don't ever think it's just one thing. So, okay, right. Do you know what? That kind of felt good. And this is no ego involved, but I'm going to do 100 kg because that was very easy. So I'm going to go 100. 100 will be easy as well, but let's do it. People must think I'm always hating on the UK, and I am. And they say, well, why don't you do something about it? Why don't you move out to the UK? Well, I have done as well. I've done that as well, but I have commitments here, I have family here, so I can't fully move out of the UK, but I try my best to stay out of the UK as much as possible. And just telling you, like I said, it's only 18 degrees outside, but these rubber plates that I've bought new ones, if you're wondering why there's chalk everywhere, I don't know if you can see on that one, I've rubbed chalk everywhere, is because these have condensated like rubber plates are condensating in 18 degree weather outside. Absolutely crazy. Don't get this shit abroad. You don't get this shit anywhere. But anyway, you know, in the UK, I do like training in the cold as well, though. So I'm just bitching and moaning for no reason. All right, okay, so that's 100 kilo. Very light, should be easy. Going through the motions. I'm not going to count reps here. I'm just going to go for the feel and see how much I can feel to get out. There's no records to be broken here. We just want to go until we're about 50% fatigued. Yes, 50%. We don't want to hit too much fatigue. Okay, so that felt really light. And the reason why I did it when I said I wasn't gonna do it is because now, next week when I come to train or in four days when I train chest again, because I have a four day rotation, so it'll be in five days, uh, my body has now got used to this 100 kilo load in this range of motion. I used to do inclines, so now I'm doing flat. I've changed the rotation a little bit, so now I'm gonna do incline dumbbells. That's the next exercise. So my body knows, okay, this is what's going on. It's felt the load, I'm gonna eat my food, I'm gonna do some cardio, I'm gonna to go to sleep. My body is gonna to get to work and say, right, this guy's done 100 kg in this region, in this plane of motion, so let's strengthen this, let's strengthen this, let's strengthen the lats, let's strengthen the posture, let's get everything in line. If you watched the video yesterday, I'm kind of like out of whack, as you know. This is like all messed up, but this is the rebuild. We're gonna get back again. This is it, you know, so you will see some new muscle tissue being added. I uh, probably lied when I said that, it's not gonna be new, it's just gonna be stuff that I lost. But it's okay, it's gonna look good, it's gonna look impressive, so looking forward to it. And if you guys follow along as well my workouts, you will be able to um, also add muscle tissue. And the reason for that is, yes, I'm at a different stage, I'm at a different level, but reason why I'm going back to this basic workout is because it works. If there was any other workout that would make me add muscle as fast as possible, I would be doing it. If there's any workout there that I would say to anyone, whether it's a pro bodybuilder or amateur starting out, this would be the workout because it contains everything. You have a heavy press on a bar, you have a heavy press on dumbbells, which is coming next, and then you have some isolation work. Very simple, that's all you need to grow, nothing else. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but there's an alarm going on outside, off outside, and it's been like this all day. Maybe they're on holiday, who knows, but, uh, or maybe they're just at work, which is uh, a little bit annoying, but at least it's not copyright. At least not gonna give you a copyright strike, unless YouTube can start giving copyright strikes for alarms as well. But, uh, okay, so these dumbbells, yes, they're a little bit wet, but I'll figure that out later. Uh, just to give you a little tip on weight. So that was 20 kilos. I'm now going to do 30 or 28. I can't remember what the weight is on the next plate. Because if the selectorized ones, I've got these twist handle dumbbells. And it doesn't really matter when you are at the start of this journey on how heavy you go on these. Once you start building up your strength, 
on. Once you start building up your strength, so this is 27 now. Once you start building up your strength on the bar, be it incline or flat, in my case, it's gonna be flat, then this comes automatic, weirdly enough. And it just so happens that when you start hitting your stride and your peak on the flat bench or the incline bench on the barbell, these are just gonna fly up. You're not gonna realize how fast and how quick you get strong on these. So the goal for these are eight to 10 reps. Never do anything less than that, unless you are at a really heavy peak of, you know, off season or really trying to grow. But to start with, don't go crazy on these. You will get strong on these quite naturally. You don't have, it's not something you have to work on to get strong on. Once you get strong on the bench, this is gonna become second nature. So I can still feel that slight bit of niggle on my right side. So I'm gonna do another set on this just to uh, play it a little bit safe. Body weight exercises. I don't know why people don't include these in their workout. And I'm not, I don't just mean dips and pull-ups. I use dips and pull-ups. I love dips and pull-ups. I do them every single day, yes. So often you might see me when I'm doing back, I won't be doing pull-ups. And when I'm doing chest, I won't be doing dips. I do them every single day. But today I missed them. So um, when I say I do them every day, <laughs> on the days where I do my cardio in the morning inside, then obviously I have no pull-up station, dip station. So there I did it inside. But when I'm out and about doing my cardio, then I will always come back here and do my pull-ups and my dips. Now, when I used to train at other gyms, I had two memberships. So there's a gym down the road from me where I used to do my cardio. I would do dips and pull-ups and usually always somebody would be on these machines and shit like that. So I had to wait my turn after my cardio, but it's very, very essential to control your own body weight. And with dips and pull-ups, you don't have to add weight. If you want a weighted vest, like a 20 kg one, maybe I might get one later on because I do want to get good at these again, but I've never, I've never stopped them. I've never, ever stopped dips and pull-ups. And you know, I credit a lot to keeping me in check, keeping you supple, injury free for the most part. Talk about injury free when I've got a slight bit of a niggle, but we're working through it. Okay, dips, very simple, guys. I don't have to tell you how to do this. So, when it comes to this, I tend not to go to failure. I say two sets to failure, but just before failure. And failure means when you're about five reps short of the technique or the form slipping, which means if your technique slips and your form slips, you're high risk of getting injured. If you go too low on this, if you break past parallel, so if your shoulders are here, that's too dangerous. They need to stay around about there. So don't be coming like this on dips. Way too dangerous for me anyway. Might be guys out there who are professionals at this, the calisthenic, calisthenic, calisthenic guys. Do what you want, bro. You guys know, you guys are the professionals when it comes to this. Like I see people do, um, what's it called? Is it called the plank, planch? Where they use the dip bars and they go all the way down and feet in the air. Crazy strength. Body weight strength, don't forget that. People always get this mixed up, say, oh, you're not strong if you can't do 20 pull-ups. You're not strong if you can't do handstand. Listen, bro, there's different levels of strength. You know, the world's strongest man isn't gonna be able to do 100 dips or 10 pull-ups even. Everyone's a little bit different. Stay within your own lane, stay within your own range. Yes, there's guys like me who like to be a bit hybrid. I like to do a little bit of both. I like to make sure my endurance is good. I like to make sure I'm looking good. I like to make sure I'm, too, I'm, I'm, I'm supple as well. My main thing at the minute is to get the physique back that I had and to get as flexible as possible. This is a new, new goal. So hopefully flexibility comes back quick. I don't have many injuries or any injuries for that matter. So I really want to get flexible. It's always something that I've wanted to do. And I always said, but by the time I hit 40, I want to get very good at this kind of stuff and I'm almost there. So 
uh, we'll, we'll see. I'm, uh, I'm trying every day, let's just say that. And I will start sharing some of the morning workouts that I'm doing as well. They might be of use to some people. And yeah, that's about it. You have to do everything. But you can't be the jack of all trades to the sense where you can't be master of none. I, I understand that. But the saying goes on a little bit more than that. What is it? Jack of all trades, master of none. But you know what? I'm going to get my phone out the next set and read that quote because it's a little bit longer. Many people don't believe it. But I'll tell you in short what it's trying to say is at least you're doing something. And I'll tell you exactly what that quote is in just a minute after I do another set. Let's have a look at this quote then. Jack of all trades, full quote. Okay, so here it is. A jack of all trades is a master of none, but oftentimes better than a master of one. So that's the point I was trying to say. Most people forget that bit. So yeah, I am trying to be supple. I am trying to be strong. I am trying to get the physique back, the best ever condition possible, the biggest possible that I've ever been. Not the strongest possible because that is something that is just a bit beyond me right now and you risk on getting a bit injured. So yes, I'm trying to do all these things. And yes, it's okay to be a jack of all trades at times, but don't go too over the board. Don't go to too many different extremes. Like for example, there's many guys out there who are bigger than me. They're more flexible than me and they're more stronger than me, which I know is achievable. So I've seen people who are flexible and strong and look good. Flex Wheeler was very flexible, very strong and one of the best physiques in the world. There's many guys out there at the minute who have that attribute. So it's easy for me to attain that. Now at the same time, are we gonna get someone like Brian Shaw doing the splits and handstand press ups? No, we're not. Are we gonna get Brian Shaw swinging off one of these bars and catching another one in front of him. No, we're not. So until somebody shows me it can be done, and I know you're gonna say, well, don't put limitations on humans. I know, I know. But come on, let's be a little bit realistic. Like I know people always use the Roger Bannister example. Nobody could run a four minute mile and now college kids are running a four minute mile. I know, bro. But that was at least doable. At least it was like, yeah, it can kind of happen if somebody can kind of do this and that. It's like, for example, will anybody run sub nine second hundred meters? I believe they will. If you let them take the right amount of gear, then they can do it. And yes, we all know the hundred meter sprinters are all on steroids. Every single one of them are on steroids. I don't care what you guys believe. Every single person with a gold medal is on steroids. I believe that. But the difference is they have to cycle off it nearer to the show so they don't get caught because the blood doping often happens not blood doping, but the blood tests often happen after they run the race. So they win the race, they go into the back, they get the blood drawn, so then they can keep that for further testing down the line. That's how it normally works. You don't get tested beforehand, you always get tested after. And I feel that if the testing wasn't in place that severe, then, yeah, we will see an eight second, 100 meters. 100% we're gonna see it. So, there you go. Don't uh, put limitations on yourself. But be realistic as well. We'll do a last set on this. <sighs> okay, so that's dips done. And now I'm gonna go over into a superset. Yes, I do supersets. Well, I don't. This is like one of two supersets that I like doing. Okay, so literally everything in the gym today is condensated. Hopefully I don't have this issue later on down the line when it gets really cold. It's not even that cold today and I have this problem. Okay, why is this rough? Okay, that's a little bit heavier than that side. That's why. When it comes to this exercise, you do not want to be going heavy at all. It will mess your shoulders up.
Okay, so I'll do 10 on that. And like I said, the only superset that I do is this. So now I've got an 18 kilo dumbbell. I don't know why it's going really dark. Maybe I need to set the camera lighting a little bit different. I'm not too clued up with cameras, but I do have, I think, one of the best cameras. It's a Sony a7 IV. If anybody knows about cameras, I think it's pretty, pretty decent. Right, maybe because the door's open, I don't know. Right, so we'll do the cable crossovers and I'm gonna rest about half a minute to a minute and I'm gonna go straight into this. Dumbbell pullovers for the chest. I know many people do this for your back. I like to do it for my pets. I think you can see me, yep. Right, we're in shot. So I don't know how much of that was in shot, but the idea there isn't to go all the way down and it isn't to get a massive stretch. You just want a decent stretch. Uh, you don't have to put your head at the end of the bed, at the end of, off the edge of the bench. That's because the seat was high, so I had to scuffle back a little bit, but, uh, Guys, I'm having a real big issue with this condensation. Hopefully someone, can help, someone out there can help me out. I don't know what to do. Dumbbells and everything seems a little bit wet today. Don't know why. Well, I do know why it's condensation. But they were wet before I got in here, so why would they have condensation? I don't know. Hopefully someone out there who is into the building game will understand why this happens. It's not on everything. Certain things it's on, certain things it's not. Please help me out, because this is gonna be the gym and I don't want to be coming in here getting wet. So, right, okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do three more rounds of that. So that was round one. That was my chest and tricep session complete. I didn't get to record the triceps because it's in the corner and the lens that I'm using at the minute is, for those people who know about photography or lenses, it's a 35. And then, which means you have to be a certain distance away from it. So it's a little bit annoying, but I didn't know these things. When I bought the lens, it was for gym use, not garage use. So I will be doing some research on YouTube to see what the best lens is. And if anybody knows out there about videography, videography, whatever it is. Oh man, a bit stiff. A little bit of stretching afterwards. Which I'm gonna start documenting as well. I'm gonna start recording every aspect of it. Not just the training, the cardio, the stretching, the food. I will be sharing everything. Just bear with me guys. Like I said, this lens is not something that I can use inside the house, especially in the kitchen and stuff like that. You have to be, I tried it. You have to be really far away from the subject. So I'm gonna get a, uh, a different lens one. I actually could do it on the phone, but I want the quality to be really good for you guys to see. So don't worry about it. We'll get there eventually. So that is it. Kept it very, very simple. And this is actually a chest workout that every single chest workout should be based around. Like I said at the start, heavy pressing on the bar, incline or flat and heavy dumbbells. That's it. If you have those two things in your workout, nothing else really matters. You can build a good enough chest with that. And the cables and the dips, and the pullovers, that's just fluff. It's just fluff work, that is it. It's like when you're doing deadlifts. As long as you're doing rows, as long as you're doing deadlifts, I say deadlifts, it's like back. As long as you're doing deadlifts, as long as you're doing rows, everything else is fluff. Now, pull-ups is something you should do every day, so I'm not saying that's fluff. Pull-ups is a definite staple in the back workout. And there's many things like it, uh, even when it comes to shoulders. The shoulders are two things. As long as you're doing a press, and as long as you're doing a side delt, everything else is fluff. For, chest, for legs, as long as you're doing squats and some form of lunges, so stretching within the actual squat, squat, good enough. And then all the rest is fluff. Or what I could call, or I like to call detail work. That's all it is. You're just 
etching out that physique. So that's it guys, this is the, I think it's gonna be short and sweet, I don't know how long the video is gonna be, I'm not gonna really put a timer on it, it is what it is, I let it flow nowadays. If you do like seeing content like this, please comment down below, it lets me know that you guys like seeing content like this, and I will be making a lot more of it. Comment down below, like, and please subscribe.